So this uh, horse here is Smokin Ortega Indica. He's um, a two-year-old bay AQHA gilding that will be turning three in July of this year. So I just want to show you a few things that we've done with this horse. And if you can keep your sound enabled during the video, there will be a lot of description as to um, what the good and bad about him is. So thanks for watching. So this horse is generally fairly easy to catch. Of course, this can be changed very quickly if you just catch him and ride the crap out of him every time. But um, he's pretty decent to catch both in the corral, the stall, as well as in the pasture. Um, he's been in the stall extensively. He's been in the corral probably about a third of his life since we've had him and um, then he's been in this small pasture um, for just the last couple months and he's been in a much larger pasture all of last summer and we've never had a problem catching him outside of him maybe wanting to run away with us for a second or two and then and then just allowing us to do it so um, we've put shoes on him two separate times and um, both times he was decent to handle he's had his feet handled pretty much daily when he's been ridden as far as just picking them up uh, picking out the feet and that kind of a thing um, I wouldn't say he's perfect to shoe by any means, but he's certainly not bad to shoe either. Um, and so that's one decent thing about him. A um, little bit about this horse. Uh, I picked him up back in March of 2018. He was a long yearling at that point. And I bought him just strictly to start him and then sell him. Um, we've kept him a little longer than we do some, uh, simply because my daughter's been interested in riding him. And so he's got a ton of miles on him. Um, he's really good just in general to be around. We've had a lot of groundwork done with him. Um, you know, literally dozens, probably hundreds of hours of groundwork. Um, and he's been handled by several different people on the ground, so he's really easy to, to deal with. You can see in this video he's not tied up. Um, I wouldn't say that he wouldn't walk off, but he's really good to just stand and, and uh, be saddled um, and be handled. So another thing that we've done extensively with this horse is he's been tied a lot. Um, and when I say a lot, I mean he's been tied sometimes up to 12 hours at a time, uh, multiple days in a row. Um, I just really feel like that's important for these young colts to just be patient and stand tied. And so he's been tied in the trailer. He's been tied to hitching posts. He's been tied to this little tack shed here, um, as well as a number of other places. We've never had a single problem with him wanting to pull back. Um, you can see in this video, I did kind of really slap the saddle down on him hard just to give you a sense of what he's okay with. Um, and then I'm kind of jerking on the on the cinch strap pretty hard here just to, to show you what he's okay with there. As far as bridling goes, I feel like he was better at this back um, a few months ago than he is now. Um, you know, when you have kids riding them and bridle them, it, it seems to kind of take a little bit of that sensitivity out of them and, and the manners. So you can see when I'm putting the bridle on him here, he's not necessarily really trying to get away from it, but he's certainly not acting perfect at the same time. Um, and this is something with young horses, uh, you know, they can develop kind of a bad habit with this. So I'm not going to say he's perfect at this, but he's certainly not horrible to get the bit in his mouth um, when you're trying to bridle him. So. Um, when I stuck this bridle on, he it was actually ridden on a different horse that was smaller in the head than this one, and so got it kind of hanging off of his ears there for a little while while I'm adjusting the strap on the side. Um, but 
the point is, is we've not ever had head shy issues with this horse at all. We've worked extensively with his ears and, and all kinds of things uh, up around his pole to make sure that, that does not develop into a problem. And see here, we've taught him to put his head down. Honestly, he was better at this a few months ago. We just haven't practiced it as much, but we do this with all the colts that we start. Uh, he's been mounted from the left and right sides pretty much equally. Um, and so he's really good to get onto. And another thing that we've taught him is to stand still once we get on him. He should never go anywhere. Usually we just sit there for a minute or so so he doesn't start to anticipate that. This video here basically just showing um, some of the lateral flexion that he's got, doing a little bit of this bending at the walk with his head bent around, and then basically yielding his hindquarters off the spur. Um, so uh, this is just kind of a supplement exercise that, that we do a lot of a lot of the time and this colt was really really soft for a while in his face and then you know the kids rode him for a while and then i've been back on him a little bit so he's still still decent but has kind of hardened up over over what he was uh, to begin with so um what do i not like about this horse well and you're going to see in a few of these other videos coming up that he just kind of doesn't have much of a gas pedal to him um it if he could choose to run away with you or stop and just fall asleep, then he would stop and fall asleep. I wouldn't call him totally lazy, but he definitely would prefer to be walking or stopped than to be loping. Now, part of that's come from the fact that we've loped him literally hundreds of miles. Um, we stuck him during down the dirt road and just gone for miles and miles and miles. Uh, we do that to, to make it so they don't want to run off on us and to give them that nice slow rhythmic lope that you can see here and so you know part of his laziness is he knows when we lope we lope forever and so he doesn't really want to lope but generally speaking i would put him in just a little bit kind of slower gear than uh, most horses some people do a system of like you know a, a rating of of one to ten, ten being completely hot, wants to run away with you, one being totally cold and doesn't really want to move. I'd put this horse somewhere right in the neighborhood of about a three or a four. Um, and because of that, he likes to stop. You can see these videos here. Um, they're basically zero contact on the bit. It's just stopping off my seat here. Um, and he kind of craves that stop. He wants to stop. He wants to be done working. Um, and so he does have a pretty decent stop on him. So um, along with, you know, kind of the slowness, um, he is generally not that interested in moving out. And because of that, you know, those type of horses are the ones that are more likely to kick out when you ask him to lope. He's done this twice on us. It was within the first 45 days of riding. We've not seen it since. Um, it wasn't a buck at all. It was basically just a kick out. I don't really want to lope type of an attitude. Um, and um, so that's something you kind of need, need to be aware of. We've seen this happen in other cults that we've started. And really the bottom line is when they do it, you really need to make sure you get after them and make them lope. And so once we rode him through it, he was really good to, to do this. So I always get asked if the Colts know their leads. This horse is a left lead dominant horse. You can see in this video here, he's counter cantering. Um, and I did that on purpose to kind of push him into um, that right lead going to the left. Um, I wouldn't say he's great at his leads. If you know what you're doing riding, you'll be able to get him into him, but we've not necessarily practiced it to any great degree. So um, he's got that nice slow kind of dog trot. Doesn't really want to cover a ton of country. Um, and then this is just one or two little videos of some basic groundwork. He's had a ton of groundwork, and I didn't want to bore people with with a bunch of videos on this. But suffice it to say, he backs really well. He yields hindquarters, forequarters, lunges, all the typical um, groundwork exercises that you would see with pretty much any trainer's type program. So um, he's real good about all of those. Can't say that we've done a ton of them recently, but he's certainly had a lot of it done. So, um, what's the worst thing this horse has ever done? Uh, I laid him off for about two months. 
somewhere around probably the first of November, got back on him uh, end of December and basically just took off, didn't do any groundwork or anything, riding down the road and this big black 90 pound dog comes out and tries to bite him on his heels, growling at him and really aggressively chasing him. Um, and this colt kind of tried to, I don't know if I'd call it run off, but he was definitely going somewhere. Um, and you know, really had to work to kind of get him reined in. It, it kind of wasn't fair to him because, you know, I probably should have ridden him in the arena for a day or two before I just took him off down the, the city streets. But, um, that's the worst thing he's ever done. Um, and to me, that was relatively mild. Now, having said that, if, if some kid had been riding him in that situation, they probably would not have been able to get him stopped. So, um, but that's really the, the worst of, of anything that he's ever done since we've had him. Um, so my daughter started finding some interest in this horse and, and rode him a couple times and really started to like him. So she asked if she could ride him quite a bit more. So she's been riding him for really the last two to three months, um, quite consistently. And, um, he's really been good with her. You can see there where, you know, she's putting the saddle on her saddle so heavy. She can't lift it up without the, the little steps. Um, here she's yielding his hindquarters. Um, doesn't have spurs on, but still he's, you know, relatively good at listening to this and, and, you know, flexing her around here. Um, so you're going to notice in these videos with my daughter riding him that he really doesn't want to go anywhere. And this is exactly what um, he's like. So um, he just, she'll ask him to lope and he kind of doesn't really want to um, and that kind of a thing. So she's ridden him quite a bit at the arena and has taken him to the barrel races to these little time to time only events. You can see here a big group of horses warming up for the next event and, and he's handling the commotion of all the horses really well. This is something that I don't really feel like is that common in a two-year-old. He's he's definitely handling this better than pretty much any that we've trained in the past. He's totally okay with being around other horses and, and a lot of commotion. Um, we've had him in the arena a lot. He's been ridden probably at least a third of the riding we've done has been in the arena. Um, and because of that, he's been exposed to a lot of stuff at the arena. We've been there during mounted shooting practices where he's been exposed to gunfire um, you know, and, uh, you know, tractors, um, other horses, all kinds of things. So right here, I told my daughter to really get him loping out and make him move. That's about as fast as she can get him going. And then she does a one rein stop here where she sits down and she's not really heavy enough for him to, um, to feel her in the saddle, but, um, you can see he stops a little bit there. So this is actually the first time she ever quote unquote barrel raced him. Um, and this is a time only event, but, um, you know, just really kind of keyed down like he typically is. You can see him drifting to the left there, which is basically him wanting to go back to all the other horses. Um, and, uh, anyway, so, you know, I guess the biggest thing that he's taken out of the time only barrel race events is he's been exposed to a lot of the other horses, you know, they'll go back and stand by the other horses and, and just a lot of um, stuff going on and he's really taken all that in stride really well. You can see as she goes past this last barrel she asks him to lope. Again she's trying to get him to go fast back home and this is about as good as it gets as far as a kid being able to make this run this this horse run. So um, this uh, horse has been ridden a ton in um, the mountains in the foothills and around town and on the dirt roads. You know, I would anticipate this horse has probably had close to a thousand miles put on him um, in the past year. Um, this is just a little gully, a little canal that, that runs down through here with some trees in it just to kind of give you a sense of, of what he's like, not necessarily in the mountains, but um, just kind of in varied terrain. Um, he's been on some big long rides, you know, seven, eight hour rides, um, and has been in some really rough terrain. Um, and so, and he's done really well. He's actually, I would say better than average when it comes to the mountains, really good across water and bridges and, and just picks up his feet over the deadfall and, and, uh, likes to just kind of power his way up the hills and, and is pretty decent in that setting. 
Um, you can see there he's pretty decent with mud too. We've ridden him in a number of situations where he's been in the mud. So um, this horse has been ridden by myself and my daughter and then three other individuals. So he's been exposed to quite a few different people um, and he's done fine with, with everyone. Um, he's been ridden around dogs quite a bit. Um, so he's gotten used to that dog jumping in out of the brush and uh, has done really well with that. Um, also has been exposed to traffic a lot. We've had him in a lot of instances um, in town with traffic going by, four-wheelers, side-by-sides, you know, vehicles. And then we've also loped him down the borrow pits along Highway 89 and Mount Pleasant, and between Mount Pleasant and Fairview and, and uh, Spring City. And so in that case, we've got semis and cement trucks and, you know, dump trucks and things like that passing at 70 miles an hour, and he's not ever had a problem with traffic. I mean, it was very desensitized, a lot of experience with that. So um, this horse has had an, a, a lot of really high intensity uh, rides. You know, some people call these wet saddle pad rides. Um, you know, he's come back just dog tired um, in several of the rides that we've done. Um, and like I said before, he's been on an awful lot of long rides where, you know, he's he's been under saddle for three to eight or nine hours at, a, at any given time. So, so what's his personality like? Well, he's not an in your pocket horse, but he's pretty personable. He likes to come up to you when you come in the pasture. You can see here he's coming up and wondering what the camera is. Um, he's also kind of a goof, like he's brought out a different side of all other, our other horses. You can see him here. He's on the right here, biting at this uh, roan gilding. And he, he'll do this with all of our horses, and he'll sit and pick at them, bite at their legs. He'll, he'll trot circles around them and just antagonize them. And um, he always ends up losing. They, they'll sit there and, and put up with it for a while, and then eventually they just run him off. Um, but he, he really is kind of a personable um, uh, type of a horse, wants to know what's going on, is curious, um, and that kind of a thing. Um, and so definitely has brought kind of a different dynamic into the herd. So, um, I mentioned earlier that my daughter's riding, ridden him quite a bit and she's ridden him, uh, probably more outside the, of the arena than in, this is a right up the white Hills in spring city. We got into some really deep snow this day up to, you know, almost to his chest. Um, and he, he did really well on this ride. And this is basically in February of 2019 and, and, uh, just really has done very well of course by this you know video here he's had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles on the, in the mountains and the foothills um, this is basically coming down a hill this is actually quite a bit steeper than it looks in the in the uh, video here and it was pretty muddy this day this is kind of a south facing slope that had melted off um and he does really good with this kind of stuff. So he doesn't really want to rush uphill or rush downhill. He just kind of takes his time, which is something we had to teach him. So, um, you know, we have this perspective of uh, we like to put just a ton of miles on our colts. And, and maybe that comes at the cost of, of having, a, you know, sort of a decent handle on them. Um, I, you know, always feel like I'd rather have a, a solid broke horse that's got a lot of miles rather than just to have a perfect stop or, or a spin or things like that. And so, you know, is he the best broke horse when it comes to some amazing handle as far as being able to really slide to a stop or neck rein or spin or things like that? No, he's not He's not at that stage right now. But I can tell you he's had as many miles as just about any two-year-old coming on three-year-old that I know of. Um, and so you can see here that uh, biker going by. So, so... Am I selling this horse as a kid horse? No, not necessarily. If you've got a older child or a teenager that's confident with horses, then I think in the right situation he could be fine, but he still is a two-year-old, and people need to still recognize that. Um, you know, I really do like this horse, though, and I think he's going to make someone a heck of a good mount. Um, feel free to give me a call or text me from the number in the ad if you're interested. Be happy to have you come and uh, take him for a ride and and uh, get a vet check done or anything like that. Um, 
to see if he'd be a good fit for you. Thanks.